They accidentally set the new Jumanji in Pandora. James Cameron's gonna be pissed. Showing your friends how the sh you're doing is more awesome than what they're doing, but you're such a good friend, you're willing to leave it behind. That's a sin, right? I think it is. Bethany and her awesome life. Nose rings. What is this, 2005? Take that thing out, you damn hippie. How's New York City? It's great. How's school? It's okay. Jesus Christ, the beginning of this character's arc is more depressing than the main family in Parasite. I don't even know what I'm doing here. You're recovering from hip surgery. Meh. I'll be out of here in no time. It's not a prison. I want to get back to my apartment. Is that so terrible? Your apartment? Yes, it's terrible. Expositional arguing. Come on in, make yourself comfortable. Hilarious pratfall, but Eddie just had hip surgery, so this definitely undid anything that was recently done. It's all downhill from here. You remember how the last movie had all that energy and joy and snappiness? Like you were actually playing a video game? Well, apparently the next level of that game involves getting repeatedly kicked in the balls. I know this game is magic and but if I remember correctly, they went full office space on that console at the end of the last movie. So the game itself should be in smithereens. And if the movie's saying that it's magic enough to survive it, why is it damaged at all? Also, what the f*** is going on in this movie? We're ten minutes in and still dealing with what we've been doing since the last movie bullsh**. None of which is interesting, I might add. There will eventually be Jumanji in this Jumanji movie, right? So, M, is that that's what we're supposed to call you now? You don't, okay, you don't have to. It's just a nickname. Jeez, it's not like she changed her name to Nuwanda or something. Her name is Martha. Is using the first letter of that name not much of a f***ing stretch? This f***ing guy goes by fridge. What do you want, Milo? Nice to see you too. Awesome, I guess they finally got around to making grumpiest old men. Where is he? I don't know, but I do know those are some incredibly timed drums. Like, Lars Ulrich couldn't time these drums any better to this line. We gotta go get him. I gotta stop hanging out with white people. I don't know what the hell is wrong with me. Har har, but why is Fridge this opposed to figuring out some sort of plan? Sure, they're all buddies, but he and Spencer have been, like, best friends for forever. Isn't he interested in figuring out how to save his boy in the slightest? Welcome to Jumanji! What? We haven't even picked our guys yet! I know, it sure does feel like this script is being written in real time, doesn't it? You guys? Considering we find out that the game was able to capture Milo and Eddie from upstairs, why didn't it take Bethany? It's like the game was saying, we need that Hank's kid too, and Bethany will be the most likely to go get him, even though it makes zero sense to bring him back into this. Look out! What? Ah! Considering they can die from regular causes in this game, how do either of these assholes survive this? Yes, I'm Fridge, goddammit! The hell, man? Okay, even though they're doing their best between this character doing a Fridge impression and the Rock character doing a Danny DeVito impression, this movie is already getting on the wrong side of cartoonish, even for a movie that's mostly placed in a video game. Oh, my joints feel like butter. This goes on for some time. Are we in Florida? There's so much rehash of the last movie in this part of the movie, man. So I'm just gonna say the city sequels. Sequels. You gotta stay alert. I'll be honest, I haven't seen this movie before, but I guarantee goddamn you that Fridge is about to die. And yeah, this moment may have been spoiled by the trailer, but I can't remember that shit. These days, I don't even know what year it is. Who's with this fella? My dearest mouse, surely you remember me. Nigel Billingsley, at your service. If Nigel is an NPC, then why is he talking to Milo as if he's answering the question he was just asked? When Martha asked Nigel a direct question just a second ago, he went by the game script. Why would I have a letter? I don't mean to keep bringing this up, but if they were going to make Dwayne Johnson do this accent for a large portion of this movie, why didn't they just dub Danny DeVito's voice over his acting? Drunk history style. Yeah, when did this turn into Mad Max Jumanji Road? Jurgen the Brutal. Is that Barbara's boy? Unless Milo's an idiot, which this movie has not led us to believe he is, then this is not a thing he would ever say. Come on, beat it. Jesus, there's so much dicking around in this plot, I feel like I'm watching an orgy video on a porn site. Another interesting thing about the ostrich. I said scram, you stupid bird. When threatened. Get out of here. They attack. <laughs> See, this is why the movie doesn't work. Milo doesn't know for sure that Eddie has multiple lives in this game. So why wouldn't he say this to the guy who's actively threatening the attacking bird? Makes no goddamn sense. At least in the last movie, we could believe that Bethany was enthralled with having a penis. These tattoos on our arms? That is your life count. Seems like it would be good to start with this info as soon as you got here, no? There's one more thing about ostriches. Oh no. Say it! They travel in herds. And why was this one from just a minute ago by itself? Ostriches, dune buggies, zero stakes, excitement? We're not gonna make it! And yet they somehow do, despite that perspective and all logic and video game logic. Like, is this the way the game wants to be played? Milo, push on your left, like, chest area. I'm sorry, what? Come on, man. So why didn't Fridge's calling card come up when he demonstrated hitting his chest for Milo? I've been training four hours a day for six months. Now look at me! What did Fridge expect? The last time he was in the game, he was a weakling, right? Can we skip the bitching and actually get on to the actual plot of this movie, which, by the way, has already been going on for over 40 minutes? Because that's the next level. Roll midriffs. Wait, I mean short shorts. I mean cleavage. 
Also, what has the last 30 minutes of Jungle, Ostriches, Dune Buggies, and Desert been? Does the game, like the movie, have an annoying amount of preamble? Because it feels like it does. Who the f would ever play this game? Bethany? Yep. My name's Bethany, too. Awesome! Great chat. Now can we discuss why Alex sends his f five-year-old daughter to answer the door at nighttime? What exactly are we looking for again? Looking for my grandson, genius. I feel like at this point, the movie is trying to remind itself about its own plot. She wants to get together later, and I think we all know what that means. hi -yo. It means that she's got a clue for you. Oh, that's a coincidence, because I got a clue for her. Oh, yeah. Discount goth beardo Bobby Cannavale. Spencer? Wait, if this is Spencer, why did he even hesitate when he saw the original four characters? He could have just immediately said, run, bitches, and they'd already be on their way. That ain't Spencer. Look, I know my grandson. My grandson's a guy. I know the movie wants to continue on with this, Eddie has no clue this is a game spiel, but at this point, how the f*** does he not know this is a game? Hey. Hey. God damn it, Spencer's been in this game presumably a decent amount longer than the others, but doesn't say about what the situation is, or that the game has changed, or even question how his f grandfather got here. Also, how does this game work sequentially? Spencer just died in the upstairs room, but then dropped down to the street level when he was reborn. So the game should have been reset to right before he died. But they've gone through all these awkward Fina introductions for the last several minutes unmolested. And the game has just gone on as normal? Aw, oh, there she is. Who? My ex. Okay. So if Bravestone talking to his ex-flame is a pivotal point in this game, then how would Spencer have ever accomplished anything as Ming Fleetfoot? How would anyone be able to complete this game if Bravestone wasn't a part of it? And it's not even the real clue, just an excuse for The Rock to make out. So you must hurry. <laughs> in what f video game from the mid-1990s would they feature a scene where one of the characters makes out with a hot lady? I don't care if it's magic, this f ain't Leisure Suit Larry. If we're gonna catch up with you again, we need camels. Why camels? They're a motorcycles and dune buggies all over this joint, right? And how or why would Spencer even know this? Keep a low profile. Got it? Low profile. Character that is physically incapable of keeping a low profile and definitely won't keep a low profile is asked to keep a low profile cliche. Martha! Why did you say that name? Fritch? Yeah. Martha? Yeah. Sure, what the hell. I swear to God this concept would work better on an improv stage in Chicago than this movie. Linguistics. You can talk to animals. But linguistics is generic enough, so there's no way of knowing that unless something like this happens. Seems like the game would have given him the strength of zoolingualism, so everyone would know he had this ability. But this game is really stupid. Will you look at me? Ugh. I mean, what am I supposed to do with this? Just FYI, we're now on the third character in this franchise complaining about being in Jack Black's body. Has it gotten any funnier? Touch my boobs and I will murder you. Too late, it was literally the first thing I did. How's that possible without Martha knowing? They've been standing right by each other this whole time. Oh no, no, no! Oh my god, that was awful. Hey, remember when they were playing the actual game? That's like 3% of the movie's plot. Since this is a video game and we've seen what's happened to people who get defeated here, why are none of these bodies disintegrating like the previous ones have? Are you talking to that camel? Yes. That's Lucille, and Hank, and Jeffrey's in the back. You know what? Kevin Hart is really funny in this movie. And if he's not giving this performance, I'm not sure this is even passable entertainment. So that deserves at least one sin off. The f You get out of any danger once you die? The dude that shot them isn't still pursuing them after they drop back into the game? If you think about it, this game's pretty f easy. When you get to an impossible situation, figure out who has a life to give, then just get the f*** out of there, bing bang boo. Also, why hasn't any of the original characters questioned why this is a completely different game this time? How and why the f*** did it keep Nigel but change everything else? Yes, I'm talking to the camel, and he can tell that you're a pain in the ass. But can the camel also understand Eddie? Because Eddie's not the linguist, so he shouldn't be able to understand it. Holy hell, it's Dr. Doolittle language headaches all over again, and I've barely recovered from the last ones. Oh. Oh. Well, I guess they're settled. A totally unnecessary death that is a carbon copy of the stupid fight between these same avatars from the last movie? Sure, I guess so. When you can literally imagine these five actors walking up to a giant green screen for the setup of this scene, that's not promising for the next scene. I'll go first. Really? I'm with you, Ocean's 8. Fridge just made it pretty clear he should be the one going first, but we need more rock stupidity, because the movie's only given us 53 minutes of that so far. Well, if the bridges start shifting, then Fridge's geometry skills aren't worth so what's the point of him having those skills? There are difficult games, and then there are just painfully and stupidly impossible games. This would fall in the latter category. This is like the 2019 version of Friday the 13th for the NES. 
In what game would Martha's avatar have her new life pop up here? She could just as easily die again. And since the start of the bridge level seemed to start at the top of the cliff, that's where she should reappear. Eddie! Milo! I swear to f Buddha that this script is built off 90% of characters saying each other's names. Also, in case you're counting, this CGI monkey splash page has gone on for roughly six hours now. Hey guys. Joe Bro X Machina. Also, how? And really, how? Bethany tried to get into the game before and failed, but Colin Hanks has some sort of hack for that. Also, also, why is this a feature of the game? How would they have played it if two random new players didn't just show up? Oh, we brought you some clothes. You must be freezing. Wait, what? How did Alex and Bethany know where they would run into them? And shouldn't they be behind them in the game regardless? Why wouldn't they have started at the beginning like everyone else did? You can shop here? How do you know how to do that? I was here for 20 years, kiddo. Yeah, that explains it. What made you do it, huh? And why now? Milo, what's going on? He has cancer and he's gonna want to stay in the video game so he can live and the movie can have a happy ending. Again, never seen the movie before, but this is so paint by numbers it has my brain leaking out of my ears. That last level almost killed us all. I can barely walk. Yeah, about that. Have you ever seen a video game character get a sprained ankle? Who the wants to play that game? Like, do NPCs get splinters and stuff that need attention? Yo, you guys gotta see this! You better come take a look at this cliche. So they all jumped into the water that turns you into different characters, but they did it all at the same time. How did the original cast get the exact characters they wanted and Eddie and Milo got stuck with the extraneous folks like the thief and the horse? How did Colin Hanks get the Nick Jonas character in the first place? What are the goddamn f***ing cash bitching rules? Also, they're playing Welcome to the Jungle by Guns N' Roses during this sequence, which made sense for the last movie, but what's that doing here? There was even a song named Next Level that was on the Hobbs and Shaw soundtrack. How was that missed? Also, also, movie gives you the option of choosing which Jack Black performance is more problematic, that of an 18-year-old girl or an 18-year-old African-American male. Mmm, why are there like 20 NPC bad guys arresting the f***ing horse? There's ice everywhere. Jumanji Inception. Has the ultimate villain of this movie posed any threat to the characters besides that one scene with Spencer? He seems completely coincidental to the main characters, and maybe that's the point, but there are very few points being made in this movie, and I'd like one to hang on to. We came to get the thing that we came to get. This works. When you're, like, scared and insecure, that's when you need your people the most. Very nice sentiment, but movie and therefore game have time for this. Hey, Mr. Walker. <laughs> Why the long face? Dad jokes, sorry. Just because you admit dad jokes are dumb doesn't make the joke itself any less sinful. Let's get you out of here. <laughs> So does the horse get kidnapped every time you play the game? What if no one chooses to be the horse? Does the sequence just not happen? This movie seriously has no idea how to video game correctly. Both of my balls are right here. In spirit. It... They're here in spirit. Of course. The f*** is this storyline doing in any video game, man? Even Grand Theft Auto doesn't have a whole thing about Unix. Also, why is the NPC even reacting to what Bethany is saying? He's already said this spiel about being clever in Unix. He should be done talking. He definitely wouldn't be reacting to anyone. Shall we? <laughs> Now that's cool. Horse shadowing. So I'll ask one last time, where is your sister? I'm right here. Interesting that Martha walked around the corner right as they were about to get killed, but also right as Jurgen was loudly exclaiming who he was looking for, so she knew exactly how to explain why she was there. The brothers Kababek have been delayed in Gorik. These are imposters! Oh. So then Fridge and Bethany were always supposed to pose as the brothers? But they didn't know that, so the fact that all this came together is both convenient and impossible. I mean, it's really not hard taking on a rock when you handle a mountain, am I right? Seriously, this mother snuck up on Spencer. He's so big he should make sound waves like the Iron Giant whenever he walks. Also, what the f is this Zeppelin? This finale set piece is just as unnecessary as the f invisible plane at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming. So don't wait. If Alex knew the horse could fly, why in the f wouldn't he have told everyone before Eddie got on Milo? Makes no sense to keep that tidbit to yourself. Also, why did Milo even need Eddie to ride him? He can run himself and fly to Spencer. It would also be one less person that needs to be on the horse. And yeah, yeah, Eddie ends up getting the jewel, but Spencer could have just as easily jumped on Milo and finished this on his own. Show to the sun. Which means they need Milo, the horse, to finish the game. God damn it, this horse is so insanely critical to the outcome of this game. And if Bethany doesn't get Alex to help her, then the horse isn't even available for them to use. What the f*** would they have done then? And sadly, this is where we part. Yeah, I don't know what's sad about it. Ain't that the truth. Has anyone had any fun on this journey? He wants to stay. He won't be able to get out. He knows. 
dude. I know Milo is sick in the real world, but this is some Tron level bullshit. Oh yeah, in case you forgot, this is a goddamn Christmas movie, for no reason whatsoever. So you need some help around here? You mean it? I mean, I, I'd be honored. Who gets this excited about a 70-ish year old man who just had hip surgery offering to help them run a restaurant? Also, the idea of Danny DeVito ending up with a former actress from Cheers not named Rhea Perlman seems a little wrong, no? Also, B.B. New Earth reprises her role from the original Jumanji, which you already forgot. Seriously, we just sinned this movie a couple years ago and couldn't remember her. Finish him! Make sure you click that bell icon. <clears throat> Sellouts. But clicking the little bell icon is how you make sure you get notified every time we release a video. So click it. <clears throat> Sellouts. Um, I love it. That is so fetch. Gretchen, stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. You gotta pay the troll toll if you want to get into that boy's hole. When I gonna make it? Smokestack. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Jumanji berry tree. The snozberries taste like snozberries. I think I would recognize an ape if I saw one, okay? And the only thing I do recognize right now is a political fiasco here that I'm about to avoid by letting this butt Brady Bunch go. Son of a bitch. Damn it, damn it, son of a bitch. Where is Bethany? She's right here. Never wanted to be a horse so much in my life. Oh, there's something I have to ask you. Okay. Are you the key master? 